An emergency fund plays a vital part of your overall financial health. Most people will ignore setting up an emergency fund because, okay, I get it. It's not as glamorous as stocks or bonds or other investments. But did you know that the low rate of return on an emergency fund actually can improve the performance of your other investments? You really should have at least six months of living expenses built up into something that you can easily tap, such as a savings account. I know some of you are going to say six months seems like a little bit of a large amount of money to stash away in a savings account, but it's really meant for unexpected expenses such as car repairs, home repairs, or even a period of unemployment. But how does an emergency fund boost the performance of your other investments? So imagine that you have an unexpected $1,000 car repair, just as an example, and you have no emergency fund. You keep all of your money in a brokerage account, uh, individual retirement account or other retirement account, or a 401k plan or something similar at work. You could pay for this repair with a credit card, but unless you're able to pay for this charge on your next statement, you could be hit with a 20 plus percent interest rate if you carry a balance. You could also sell a thousand dollars worth of investments from your brokerage account, but that could mean selling an investment that has maybe lost money recently and it's poised to grow in the future. But if you sell now, you could end up owing taxes on any gains it's made and losing out on any gains that it could be making in the future. Another option is you could be withdrawing this thousand dollars from your retirement account. That's going to open up some other scenarios too. If you're under age 59 and a half, you're going to be paying an additional 10% early withdrawal penalty. Plus, unlike your brokerage account, you're going to be paying income taxes at the standard income tax rate, not at the preferred investment rate. So not having an emergency fund can be more expensive than settling for a low interest paying account that you can tap very quickly in an emergency. So what is the priority for funding an emergency fund versus other investments? You should fill your emergency fund first before putting your money into other investments. Emergencies happen when you least expect them, and it is far cheaper to pay for these emergencies out of a bank account than your investments. So how do you go about funding your emergency fund? You should plan a budget for your living expenses and save whatever you don't use in an emergency fund. I know this is easier for some than others, and it depends a lot on your income level, your living expenses, and your ability to live within your means and your own self-discipline. A way to budget is to use the 50-30-20 method, which means 50% needs, 30% wants, and 20% savings. This is just a guideline and everyone's situation is unique, so this may not work for everyone. You may have to adjust the levels a little bit, but careful planning will allow most people to set aside something for emergencies. Those who are just getting started in life may have to wait a while before getting into the stock market or other investments. The emergency fund needs to come first, but building an emergency fund is very important and will improve the overall performance of your investments in the decades to come. Your emergency fund will act as a shock absorber and will allow your investments to grow uninterrupted. So how does using an emergency fund to fund unexpected expenses compare with using investments or other means? To keep the math simple, the following graph will not assume sales taxes. It will assume a 10% early withdrawal penalty on retirement accounts and a 10% income tax rate. Your income tax rate will vary though. Spending $1,000 from an emergency fund will cost $1,000 plus any small amount of interest the account may have paid. Many accounts only pay 0.2% interest at the time of this video, so it is a very small amount. 
Withdrawing the money from a regular brokerage account may involve a brokerage fee. Depending on the firm you use and any income taxes owed will depend on if the investments sold at a profit. This will vary for everyone. Withdrawing from a retirement account for those who are under 59 and a half years old will mean withdrawing $1,250 to cover the amount of the 10% early withdrawal penalty and the assumed 10% income tax. Roth IRAs are different since there is no tax or penalty owed on contributions. For those older than 59 and a half years of age, about $1,111 would need to be withdrawn from a 401k or similar workplace plan to pay the assumed 10% income tax rate. But what about using a credit card? If you can afford to pay the $1,000 charge on the next statement, and if your credit card offers cash back, this may be the best option. Literally, a cash back option on a credit card is like an automatic discount. But if you end up carrying a balance, most credit cards charge at least 20% interest. And if you get trapped making only minimum payments, it could take you anywhere from 15 to 30 years to pay the balance down. You could easily end up paying two to three times the actual charge because of interest. Clearly, a credit card is easily the most expensive way to pay for an emergency like this. If any of you have any stories about how you've used your emergency fund, leave a comment in the section below. Until the next video, take care and remember that your money matters. Peace.